Well, here we are. We are finally to the big bada boom bye week. Six teams are on bye. There are players you are going to need to scratch a claw for off the waivers so you can get a start this week. We're looking beyond this week to other weeks, and we've got some big breaking news on the show. Please like the video, subscribe, hit the little plus button so you get notified when we go live. Enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. It's Christmas time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. High five. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Impatient. Oh, that's not impatient. Yeah, oh, I Fools. patiently waited until <sighs> November 1st. I was going to say, my patience knew you no don't. bounds. I have been waiting at least 10 months for this. <laughs> Deucers. I don't care what other people I think. I mean, is this, this is ridiculous, right? Yeah, I wait till December. Mm-mm. No, 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 December's too long, bro. Oh, <laughs> oh come on. Hey, look, there are two choices that are appropriate for Christmas because you can't just make something happen with sheer will. You have to the enjoy it for forty years, my man. The, the enjoyable well, delusion is not part of it. But um, November fifteenth, if you want to just draw a line, like if we just as a society we want to say, if we want to say November fifteenth, and you've let you've let Halloween kind of bleed out, people have cleaned their yards up. All right, I don't mind that, but I think tradition is the day after Thanksgiving. The, yeah, the the November. Which I'm, 5th, seeing, I'm seeing an Al Borland oh, yeah. nod over there. Absolutely, the yep. day after Thanksgiving is tradition. That's when sure. the Christmas season kicks off. I understand that. I mean, that's Black Friday. That's Christmas shopping. That's I get that. I completely get that. The November fifteenth thing that makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, either it that's gonna you, that's you're, for, waiting, that's either you're for the, waiting for Thanksgiving or you're not. That's the people who don't like because Thanksgiving moves around a little bit, right? Yeah, no. sometimes you get, it does. Well, it's always the fourth it, Thursday. Yeah, but the day, <laughs> the day of the month can change. Right. That's all I mean. Like, if you're uncomfortable with like a, a kind of a moving target, I feel like you can draw a line. I'm you, just saying you can. You go with the 15th, then you're just sitting on the fence, and the the Thanksgiving truthers will hate you. The early Christmas truthers are not going to like it either. You got to make a decision. Well, here's a nice November thing about- 1st it, through through Thanksgiving is either all about that trash holiday or. You can jump right I mean, this, in with us. People are, are unsubscribing. They're throwing. They're actually throwing their phones. They're willing to throw away the investment on their phone. <laughs> they're hurling their phones into the ocean. The only reason to turn this podcast off, and it makes complete sense, is to play some Christmas music. Yeah, and I don't yeah. blame you. You get after it. And here's Shut the, nice the thing show about off and play some Christmas be, music. Being an early Christmas truther, I, I don't care what you do. Yeah, you I can't take my joy away. That's right. I am a d- holly jolly... Christmas time, man. Christmas man. man. <laughs> yeah, if you don't, if you don't I, want in, that's yeah, fine. I, that's fine. I mean, I just, just you know, you guys are out on your own island alone. That's no, okay. Well, there are many with us. Yes, there are dozens of us. <laughs> <laughs> dozens. <laughs> Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. The Borgogan back in the building today. I'm back with the. Uh, and you got a Borgogan monster right in front of you with, for the first time, and of course a King Griffey Junior shirt because he lives for King Griffey Junior. <laughs> How many King Griffey shirts do you own? I own six. Six. <laughs> How many rated rookie Don Russ Ooh. King Griffey cards do you have? Because we all had them. No, I have a couple of those. Yeah. But yeah, I looked at my collection this past weekend. It's worth <laughs> while you were wearing 30 your, cents. Do you switch between shirts while you're looking at your collection <laughs> or do you just commit to one? Uh, just, you know, I can go most of the week just switching it out. Uh, the Borgogan back with the cast of the neon lights behind him. Judge Giamatti Al Borland in the building as well. Waiver show today, welcoming some players into the fold. Very important considering we have six teams on by. You might wake up this morning and look at your roster and go, oh, 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 <laughs> because you didn't realize that half your team is gone. If you wake up and do that, though, <laughs> there's a number of reasons. But if it's the bye week uh, cause, we, we are here for you. NFL news to talk about. Now, I'm not going to spend time on today's episode of the show on trade rumors because that will probably be stupid. The one, the 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific deadline 
uh, is coming, but it has not yet arrived as of this recording. So the producers have promised to break in with any trade news. Uh, there have been a number of players talked about. What's your favorite rumor? Oh, okay. I just wanted to see. Yeah, if I you want to try to bait me? Uh, no, I mean the, the Naeem Hines' name has come up this morning. Kareem Hunt's obviously mm -hmm. in discussion. Jerry Judy, Brandon Cooks. There are a number of players that won't get traded. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. I mean, I think we'll see some moves. I do. There are teams that need to make a couple of moves. Packers. What was what? that word? Those, those Packers. Oh, they are, yeah, they, that's Packers. Yeah, well, it was under my breath. It was through a cough. So. No, I, I got you. Just keep the right vowels in there. Uh, <laughs> quarterback streamers on the show today. And uh, we we had a Monday night football game that was a whooping. What was that? That was a Halloween treat. I mean, it was that, a tr it was a trick. Yeah, the the Bengals who going into this game were really on fire, playing very well against the Cleveland Browns who were struggling. I believe they lost. Was, had they lost five in a row or something like that? I mean, they were the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, the Browns oh, no. were on quite the losing streak. Playing putrid could not stop the run for anything i mean they were the team to target against Morgan. the run four losses in a row and then they come out and they dominate the Bengals. they get pressure in joe burrow's face non-stop they give up a total of 36 rushing yards in the game and even though at the end of the game they give up uh 229 total yards that that was like yeah. That was all garbage time. I mean, this was late into the game where they had not crossed 100 total yards of offense while the Browns were just destroying them. 440 yards of offense. Nicholas Chubb Nicholas. was in St. Nicholas mood. Oh, he was yes. ready for Christmas. Um, and he brought, I mean, if, look, Jolly old Saint Nick. <laughs> if you were looking for points from the Browns side of the ball, you won. You got everything you needed. Right, if you play, if you flex Donovan Peoples Jones, he had a pretty good game. Amari mm -hmm. Cooper was great. Nick Chubb was great. Um, yeah, and, and on Kareem the other Hunt side, was back to his ten points. You even got your garbage from Tyler Boyd, right? If you if you had moved for him, he got a touchdown. Tyler Higgins late bomb. Uh, Joe Mixon was the problem. I mean, Joe Mixon did have seven catches, but just twenty seven yards on the ground. And that was the like the the biggest confusing point for me of this game was. Okay, they don't have Jamar Chase. I get it. They will probably see a more run heavy, and it makes total sense because everybody has been dominating the Cleveland Browns on the ground, and they could they got nothing going. They tried to establish it in the beginning, and it was Joe Mixon running for zero yards each time. Joe Mixon is on pace now to catch seventy two passes. Adam Leviton tweeted this. That's, he also that's good. leads the NFL and carries inside the ten. He has nineteen of them. Wow, that has turned into two. Touchdowns on 19 good. carries inside the 10. There is a they an Alvin for a running back. There's an Alvin Kamara week coming for Joe Mixon. But when maybe? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, he's certainly he's he's had some touchdowns recently. I think the difference though is when when we've been watching Kamara all season, he just looks great. He's had the juice. He's chunk chunk run after chunk run, and and he just hasn't been getting the touchdowns. Whereas we watch Mixon, and it's like. Most of this season, he's he's been inefficient on every run, and and whether you blame him or whether you blame the offensive line, which has clearly been struggling, I, I don't know that I've seen enough from him to say, oh, it's coming, just wait. I mean, I do know. I've seen enough in the past from Joe Mixon to say that. Sure. And, and when you have ni past. 19 carries inside, that's what it is. It's 19 carries inside the tent. He has two efficient rushing games this year so he has the the two games so against Baltimore and the Saints he was over five he was at 5.6 a carry but every other game it's 3.4 or who under is, who was the player you told everybody to trade for yesterday because they had a down week remind me <laughs> um anybody remember <laughs> no I don't you just you made a big case about the history of a player and he had a down week and that's when you go and get them I'm just oh saying, that was Gabe Davis yeah I mean yeah. It, Joe Mixon has a long history of success he is on pace for 72 receptions. I'm just saying this could be one of those weeks you go grab him because, look, they just didn't show up. They're 0-13 in their last 13 road primetime games. I'm not saying he's not valuable because he's, he's been fine for fantasy football. It's just been G. Rose. Um, Jonathan Taylor, Joe Mixon, rest of the season. <sighs> Probably Mixon. Do you guys have a good Halloween? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. else? 
did the whole trick or treating thing. They they're doing new stuff out there. We hadn't believe it or not, we had not been out for Halloween for three years. Whoa. Yeah. Because no, last year, sense. last year we had a uh, COVID arrived on on Halloween, and it was um it was a trick. And we were we had sad kids, and we didn't do any Halloween trick or treating. And then the year before uh, was like I think it was the middle of the 2020 mayhem. Yeah, and well, there was there was the surge a couple years ago. And so. so we had done some. We went to an event instead. Right. So we had not been out in the streets. They're doing good stuff. They've yeah, got, they are. We got we got people giving away like full on battery powered glow sticks. I mean, this is that's next level for the kids. We had people giving away ice cream. I mean, mm -hmm. a soft full serve, soft serve machine, full soft serve machine in Impressive. the driveway. Uh, shout um, out to the people giving the grown up Jello. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. There were those. Oh, what? There were the, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Really? Just, oh yeah. Those <laughs> people, my favorite. <laughs> doing, doing Did that help? Work. You had a, a neck injury. Oh man, yeah. I was. So the grown up Jello was a, helpful. Was very necessary. I I powered through, but I was I was in a bad spot. You, you, you had woken up on the wrong side of uh, yes. your birthday. Yes, <laughs> people were very yes. Yes. generous this yeah. Halloween season. And I decided yesterday, after witnessing all this, I want to be, when I'm an old person, I want to be the, like, i got to figure out the uh, popcorn, whatever, you know, ice cream, soft serve. I got to be. Hot dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people were pretty cool. Yeah, so that was a I good like time. It. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. It was also the first year that we uh, we let the teenager just run, right. run, run around yep. and disappear, and we're old. All right, the Ravens. <laughs> updates. Mark Andrews, Gus Edwards, Rashad Bateman. Andrews, not serious. Gus Edwards, day-to-day -day with a hammy. Rashad Bateman, more serious, serious than original thought. Yeah. Originally thought. Yeah, um originally they said it was no big deal it just, a, just a little tweak just a little tweak just to Rashad Bateman so I do have my breath holding uh <laughs> mm -hmm. happening for mm -hmm. Mark yep. Andrews yep because I'm I'm I love hearing it's nothing serious hopefully he's good to go but you hear that from time to time including just recently with this team where maybe it is a little bit more serious and we're going to talk about this in in depth on the waiver segment especially at tight end but they, this is a Monday night game that for the sucks. Ravens, and they have the bye week the next week. Right. That would, um, yeah. That it, it just brings to mind the, how much the Andrews manager spends on Isaiah Likely. That's exactly right. Because you got to spend, you got to do something now. This is week nine. You got to spend up. I think you have to have if Likely. you have Andrews. Yeah. You 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 need to have a tight end in that game. And so that you can wait and make sure you have Mark Andrews and and the honestly, worst part is going to be is if he's limited, and you play him, that's also a problem. Because mm -hmm. Mark Andrews went out there and did nothing two weeks ago after an injury. But well, well, and, yeah, and like for for Gus Edwards, what do you do with Kenyon Drake? Because he's probably on the waiver wire. You start neither right of them earlier in the week. Yeah. Hopefully, it's tricky with the bye week afterwards. I worry that some of these guys might get some rest. Like Gus, yeah. I, yeah, I, why, I would, why play him? I would pick up Drake. I think Drake's going to be a fine play this week. And we'll we'll talk about that yeah. more detail. But yeah, that's the update on the injury situation for the Ravens. Ken, uh, Keenan Allen, uh, is this an official report? Can we get more than one source on this one? Uh, did yeah. not practice on Monday coming out of the bye week. Is that the report that, that I'm was seeing? that was the report? Because we had a tweet. We'll try and find the uh, the source on it last or yesterday. I thought it was weird. Like, I mean, is there a report getting... on Josh Palmer practicing? It was from after the concussion. It was from Daniel Popper, who is a senior writer for the Athletic, and he covers the Chargers. Well, that so, seems, I mean, it's, seems it's a, pretty legit. Yes. So it was, but it was weird to get a Monday report. So, did we have a report on Josh Palmer, though? Do you know? Because he was coming off the concussion, and that's a pretty big situation there. I know Mr. Moore, yeah, Jason I, Moore, has picked up Josh Palmer. I think Palmer is the pickup of the week, potentially. Pa Palmer uh, was at yesterday's walkthrough. Popper did call it a walkthrough. So, yes. okay. so that's even weirder that uh, you'd get a DNP on the walkthrough for Ooh, and, and Jason Moore was there. Oh, yeah, I was, baby. Chuba Hubbard feels like he can return in week nine. Don't listen to the players. Let's find out what the team says. Mm -hmm. Cooper Cup is day to day. Who said it? Uh, the the uh, team, the okay. Rams, have said he will play in week nine. 
and uh, avoided any serious damage. It's the tissue swelling ankle issue. DeAndre Swift. This oh, is a big man. discussion. Um, once again, I said don't listen to the players because DeAndre Swift says he anticipates having a bigger role moving forward. Um, he also said he's not 100%. And then Dan Campbell literally said, we gave him too many carries. One they, too many. They gave him you, five. So they should have given him four. That's the right number. And Dan Campbell's quote is, glad he's out there, but he's not back. Yeah. This is, uh, look, if I had DeAndre Swift, I would be very uncomfortable with my circumstances. He also had said he wished he had given that carry to Jamal Williams because I think they wish they gave them all to Jamal. Because they get like yeah. contract incentives for every carry they give to Jamal well, Williams. The, the Jamal Williams, at the beginning of the season, in the draft time, you knew that Jamal Williams was going to be an issue. I mean, just watch Hard Knocks of how much this this team loves Jamal Williams, believes in him. And Jamal Williams is a good running back. Just Team Swift like was really hoping that this would be the year that DeAndre Swift would, would break out because when he's healthy – He's got juice, man, that Jamal Williams just doesn't have. But DeAndre Swift, his value really comes from the pass catching role, which I believe he had five receptions. Five for that, 27 and a touchdown. Yeah, so nothing huge, but he had the receiving touchdown. You, I've got DeAndre Swift in the league of record, and it's, it's hold, holding on hope that he made it out healthy and he'll get a little bit more work next week. I'm not expecting him to be a bell cow. Though. Yeah, but you hope that towards the end of the season he That's gets fully hope, healthy. Yes. What Dan Campbell is saying here is that he's not actually back to the explosive athlete that DeAndre Swift usually is. You look at week one and week two, 9.6 yes. a carry. Uh, you and know, you saw it on the field. I mean, he didn't look. Every single time DeAndre Swift touched the all. ball to start the season, it was like shot out of a cannon. And now this last week, five for six. So, yeah, he's not back, so he's not going to be getting a heavy workload until he's fully healthy. Which means playing him right now comes with a, a floor possibility of a very bad game, which yes. which didn't exist before. Trade deadline, like I said, today at 4 p.m. Um, Cam Akers, another name that is out there. <laughs> Bills have been asking about running backs. Kendrick Bourne is a name that's out there. So I assume, what, four? 4 p.m. Eastern is when Cam Akers gets cut, or I don't know that he'll be cut. He might. No, just, they won't. He cut might him. be back with the Rams. That was today's news and notes presented know, by man. USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Yeah, he actually uh, he tweeted he misses football. Did you see this? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I feel bad for him. him. I'm yes. sure he does miss football, and he, hopefully he can sign with the team as a free agent <laughs> tomorrow. That's my prediction. But can it'll be they, short lived. Yeah, I just, uh, I mean, can they cut him? Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Welcome to the fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. Uh, at least the Rams have said they won't cut him. Yeah, if they no, if, totally if, won't. If no trade materializes, come trade for him. Adam Schefter had said a couple days ago that they were not willing to do that. Uh, the waiver wire rankings up on the website. Go to the fantasyfootballers.com, click the rankings tab. We have our waiver wire rankings up there to help you out beyond this episode. Lots of buys this week. Browns, Cowboys, Broncos, Giants, Steelers, 49ers. So you're Christian McCaffrey, Mike. You, the, all those points, you got to spread, yeah. spread them over two weeks. That's all right, because you know what uh, he won't be doing this week? Getting hurt. Getting hurt. <laughs> Better he doesn't play at all. <laughs> um, let's dive into what wide receivers we are welcoming into the fold this week. At the tippy top of our list, couple of names for you. Rondale Moore of the Arizona Cardinals who take on the Seattle Seahawks. And Joshua Palmer, wide receiver for the Chargers who takes on Atlanta. Palmer's 36% rostered. Rondale's about 50-50 right now. But... Um, you know, you like what you saw from Rondale last week. Eight targets, seven for 91, and a touchdown. Has the most routes run among all wide receivers over the last month, believe it or not. Well, what was really cool about this last week, if you're looking in depth at Rondale, is that he was on the field for 95-plus percent of routes run. That means that in two wide receiver sets, he was the second wide receiver on the outside, but the, but the what didn't happen two weeks ago was that in, when they were in 11 personnel and there was a third wide receiver, yep. they were kind of keeping him on the outside. This last week, they moved him in the slot 
whenever there was you know someone in the slot, that's where he dominates from. And you saw a great game out of him. And then there was a rotation for kind of that third player uh, between A.J. Green, Robbie Anderson, and Greg Dortch. But Rondale has now firmly moved into the wide receiver two spot. So while Hollywood Brown is out, which should be at least another five weeks, a long stretch of time, you're talking about the clear-cut number two target in this offense. I still hate how they use him. You have to have him break a tackle, as he did this last game. Um, and to have a big play, I, I feel like every pass is five yards maximum down the field as far as depth it, of target. They've, they've mixed up a little bit of interior passing game with him that I've, I've liked to see, but, um, when you have a player out there, every snap, that's good. Yeah, yeah. no, the, it's really good. And the Cardinals offense is starting to click a little bit better with Hopkins back. So Pretty you, crazy matchup with Seattle this week, though. At, in Arizona, where we've struggled, uh, we being the Cardinals, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> and then Seattle's defense has been amazing the last three weeks. Yeah, it's it's really funny uh, how good they've been the last three weeks and how bad they were up to the – like, it wasn't a gradual thing. Four weeks ago, they stunk. Three weeks ago, they were really good. Because I was looking at recent games. I was trying to say, okay, well, how have they been in the last six? Last six, not good. If you change it to the last three, they've been really, really, really good. Uh, Joshua Palmer, uh, questionable with the concussion, was at the walkthrough on Monday, and uh, Atlanta's giving up a ton oh, of yes. points to wide receivers. You need Palmer out there for Herbert, too. Um, they, you know, if you if you listen to the people around the team, fans of the Chargers, the frustration right now is that they are not active in pursuing a wide receiver situation i mean they lost jalen guyton they lost mike williams keenan allen's not going through the the walkthrough and palmer's got a concussion and you, you're sitting there going like deandre carter is not the answer to well deandre carter's a slot wide receiver he's like he can only really fill in for keenan well and the, my point is is like the depth chart including deandre carter is not enough to get things done in this division where you you know the broncos and the raiders are kind of out of the picture right and you have a chance to go make a move, and you have wide receivers out there, and the team has not made a move. And and so, um, you know, it's Josh Palmer and Austin Eckler right now. Yeah, Joshua Palmer is my number one pickup this week. Uh, I, I believe that he is a month-long, really, really good start. And that's, that's a minimum because they've said, you know, Mike Williams is going to miss at least four weeks. With Mike Williams gone – Joshua Palmer inherits a target share on a good offense that will be solid, and he has disappointed in some of those roles before. You know, you go back to week two when we were hoping for the big breakout and he had the opportunity, he was, you know, he put up 11 fantasy points. He didn't crush you. If you could pick up 11 fantasy points from the waivers, that's good, but we were all disappointed with it because we thought he had the chance to do more, but in some of these games where another player has missed, nine targets, uh, eight targets. This last week that we saw him before he missed with the concussion was 12 targets, yeah. nine catches. He is a part of this offense. It's a good offense, and he's not a one-week play. He's a month-long play. So, I, you know, if you need points off the waiver, I don't think there's any anybody better to pick up than Joshua Palmer. Uh, I, I would say if Palmer, if, it's, if this is purely one week, I'd go Palmer. Longer term, I'd prefer Rondale. One bit of news that we failed to mention was the uh, dismissal of the offensive coordinator in Indianapolis. Yeah. For Frank Reich, and uh, you know this is kind of fun to you know you talk about their struggles on the offensive side of the ball. This is part of their solution. I know Reich calls plays, but you know they used to have Nick Sirianni in that role. Mm -hmm. If you remember when they were really cruising along, so they're trying to fix some things on offense. Garrett Wilson, Kadarius Tony. Uh, a couple of other names worth mentioning. Kadarius Tony is healthy. Andy Reid said he will work him into the offense, but down the line, I mean, he's somebody you should have on your roster because he has the staff, skills. Though. He has the skills to take over. Yeah, if if you're not looking for a play, like I, I say, Joshua Palmer's you know my number one pickup because if you need to pick someone up and play him right now, that's where you can be sure. But if this is a bench player, if this is a guy that's going to be a backup, you're just picking someone up to fill up a roster spot and they're not going to be starting for you. I'd much rather have Kadarius Tony because the upside, is it going to happen this year? I don't know. I would put it at 30% chance, 
But when you've got that kind of explosive Tyreek style athlete going to the Chiefs with Andy Reid, where it seems like they could use someone to really step up. I know uh, uh, Juju's been pretty good for a couple of games, but over the course of the season, I mean, there's a reason they traded for him because they're yeah. thinking we need a guy. And the, the nice thing is, is when you talk about players like Wandale, right, who short area targets with athleticism, if they give Kadarius Tony six targets – in this offense, number one in point scoring in the league, Andy Reid's, you know, way of kind of crafting for a player's skill set, it could mean a lot. You know, we don't not not right away. Yep. But Agreed. something to pay attention to. Garrett Wilson, last week, nice bounce back week for him. Yeah. No. But Buffalo in the bye week the next two weeks. So that's more of a uh and then New England coming out of it. it's almost more of a message like if you can go get something for Garrett Wilson. Like I got trade offers for Garrett Wilson off of that performance, sure, and I'm willing to move him if Buffalo, the bye week in New would, England, or the next three weeks. I would be very much willing to trade him away. So I'm not necessarily. I don't. I don't even like picking him up. No, and, and for he's, Fab, he's probably mostly rostered, but he's a good enough player. We've seen flashes where he should be rostered in all the leagues. Another player, if you need a start, uh, and he is available in about half the leagues out there. Devin Duvernay. Oh, he's he's at the tippy top of this list. Yeah, Rashad okay. Bateman. We know for sure is missing. Yeah. Uh, so Devin Duvernay will have more work, and you can um, throw in Demarcus Robinson to some degree because he'll be out there as well. And I, looked good. Yeah, and uh, I think he had like nine targets or something. Um, so those two Ravens receivers with Bateman, you know, you know they're going to be out. Big opportunity here. Such a bummer about Rashad Bateman too. Yeah, yeah. Because his his season's kind of getting deleted right before our eyes. And yep. he got off to such a strong start he did. those first two weeks. Uh, other names to mention in the stash category, Van Jefferson, uh, somebody to pay attention to. I mean, this that conversation could become moot if they su uh, trade for Brandon Cooks today. Sure. Um, Terrace Marshall Jr. is playing <laughs> on 92% of snaps. So if you want a player that is always out there, and um, P.J. Walker has been competent. The, in, in providing value for his wide receivers. He also had nine yes. targets. He had 87 yards this last week. I don't know if you get to play Atlanta every week, but they uh, kind that's, of that's, do that's, in that's one fair. more week. But, yeah, you get to play Atlanta again in two weeks here. The Bengals. He's 22 years old. The Bengals matchup, I'm not sure what to think here. If they, I mean, the Browns just wrecked that well, team they, last They just night. lost a huge piece of their defense, too. Kyle, are you kind of um, – enlivened by the Terrace Marshall discussion the fact I, he's even being mentioned aloud I feel alive I'm I've been waiting for this moment and yeah. did you you felt pretty good about the Travis Fulgham comp that I gave last night when we were talking Travis Fulgham's out of the league yeah Terrace Marshall's great okay <laughs> got it Darius Slayton six more targets for Darius Slayton I you know this is a bye week for him though so you're not going to hold Darius Slayton over the bye week Donovan Peoples Jones, four targets for eighty one. Same. He's got the bye week. But it, he's been solid, man. Like he's been a very interesting player here. Rookie stashes, Jahan Dotson, Traylon Burks, Alec Pierce. If you are a uh team already with depth, already don't, aren't suffering from the bye week and you need to put somebody on your bench that uh maybe has eventual value. I would put Burks last on that list, but it's a name to remember. He will come back at some point. The season should be good, but when I was looking up for the waiver rankings, like how is he doing in his recovery? Because he's eligible to come back after this next week. Uh, the reporter that I was looking at said that he hasn't seen him around at all. So uh, j just because you're out of the four-week window does not guarantee you get to you, – you just get to be healthy. And he hadn't been relevant for fantasy yet. Yeah, it was, right. it was just the hope of you saw some flashes, the targets per route run, and then – hey, it, it's we're hot and cold with this guy because he's been hot and cold on the field, but Romeo Dobbs – Available in about 40% of leagues. Had the big week against Buffalo. Seven targets. So, like, the targets continue to go there. Had the big touchdown catch. If you saw the, the celebration on the, the sideline there, Rodgers really dapping him up. And they played Detroit. The rule of Romeo Dobbs is if you play him, he stinks. And if you put him on your bench, it's the Kyle Pitts rule for me. Perhaps. Well, then pick him up and have him no, there for I, your tiebreakers. It's, it's a good point. Cortland Sutton, the most popular drop candidate. Are you no. ready to let go of Sutton? No. no. Um, well, let's put that to the test. Uh, Rondale Moore and Josh Palmer. I would. I, I don't think I would drop Cortland Sutton for either of them. I would not either. I think I'd let him go for Rondale Moore. 
it's I mean it, it's a I think Sutton's fair the point. Th- gonna be the third time tar- I guess if Judy's gone, it's a different story. But uh Rashad Bateman. I mean These are the number one names, by the way, yeah. coming up and people who want to let these guys go. Rashad Bate- Bateman is so difficult because it the head coach said he's going to miss weeks and you're at the point of the season where like I guess if your if your team is looking great, like your your record says, No, I'm I'm gonna be safe to make the playoffs. I'm holding on to Rashad Bateman. If you got to manufacture wins because you're in the middle, yeah. you might have to drop. You, you him. know for a fact you don't have him for two weeks. So if right. you've got to move on, you got to move on. All right, uh, quick break. Back with running backs. All right, let's dive into what running backs we are welcoming into the fold. Pull up your waiver wire, and let's look and see. Just take a glance, just in case. But if Deontay Foreman is out there, please, please yeah, you gotta pick make the up. investment. The qua- the amount of work he's getting and the fact that, you know, that's an opportunity to have a big play. When you get 20-plus carries, I know they went to overtime, but he was very good. And, you know, uh, what kind of fab are you spending on Deontay Foreman? If Foreman is out there, I'm dropping at, l- at least 25 on him. Now, Chuba's going to come back. Yeah. Uh, we don't know for sure if he'll be back this week or not, but it is worth remembering that Deonta Foreman had the entirety of the workload to himself. He still rotated out on third downs, e- even this last week without Chuba. So Chuba will be the pass catching back, which means if he's out there, you should look at picking him up, and there's, it's far more realistic that Chuba is out there having missed the game and having Deonta have a big game that, uh, you know, I, I would pick Chuba up for 10 to 20. Uh, Deonta Foreman is probably 25 plus to, to get him, but and, he's probably rostered. And, yeah, look, I like Foreman picking him up and play. He's got Atlanta again in two weeks, but they scored four touchdowns. They, they had 34 total points up until this point in the season. They were living in the teens. They had, you know, surpassed 20 points just three times well, yeah but they had that bum christian McCaffrey. yeah and that's yeah this this game was better than anything mccaffrey had done for the panthers it's it's he's very interesting he's going to get a lot of volume but i'm not i'm not going out of control for him uh other names at the running back position near the top of our waiver rankings this week but majority rostered khalil herbert and tyler algier like i would pick up herbert over foreman personally I don't, I don't no, bl- I would not. I, I would. I don't blame you for the thought just because Khalil Herbert has just been awesome. Yes. As a running back, every time we've seen him in the NFL, he's he's been outstanding. He's got a, uh, a timeshare that he's worked his way into. Should something happen with David Montgomery, you're talking about probably a top five, top six back. Miami, Detroit, Atlanta is the, the stretch run here for Herbert. So I, I over the next three games, I'd rather play that over – Cincinnati and Baltimore, which Foreman will be doing. Um, Cincinnati, Atlanta, Baltimore? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a tough call. I know that all three of us liked Foreman more when they were both healthy, Chuba and Foreman, you know, going into that week and who you would pick up. Yeah. Algier had 14 carries. It wasn't very efficient. Caleb Huntley got involved, but he did have three for 46 and a, a catch for uh, a touchdown. So Algier is another you know, you're you're in a bye week. Mike has sent me trade offers yeah. for running backs. I mean, you need to have somebody to stuff into your lineup and get by this week. Latavius Murray's another name that can do that, and he's the first name that's under fifty percent rostered. Well, he can't but, do it yeah, this, not this week. week because he's on bye, but yes, he is someone that you could start after that. And you know that with Mike Boone on IR, it became a two headed monster. So Melvin Gordon, Latavius Murray, you can start both of them. I would still I start Melvin Gordon. I don't know. I would call it a monster. Okay, that's fair. It's a two, two two-headed, headed, you know, gentle, gentle squirrel. Okay, like a, a two-headed, yeah. squirrel. That's fine. It's a little off-putting. It's but it's it's gonna scare you a little bit because it's, it's got two, two heads, heads. Yeah, but but it's also the heads are a little squirrel. heavy for its small squirrel yes. body, so it's not <laughs> as fast as it used to be. Murray looks good. What? No, you're crazy. He looks better than Melvin Gordon to okay, me between you, the tackles. That's, that's fine. You can, like if you personally think he looks better than Gordon, I think he Gordon, looks more. He fine. looks more effective to me than Melvin Gordon. But I think they both look bad. Kenyon Drake seven for sixty two last week, four targets, and could have it all to himselfish kind of yeah. sorta. It's the Kenyon Drake pickup, as I was alluding to at the top of the show, is so tough because if Gus Edwards is out, Kenyon Drake will get a ton of volume against the Saints. But it's Monday night, and you probably won't know if Gus is active until 
the the game is about to kick off when they declare inactive. So it's 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 real sketchy to to bank everything on him to be your RB two or a flex play. Yeah, I I, I agree. I mean, uh, Kenyon Drake's forty percent rostered. Isaiah Pacheco forty six percent rostered. Coming off of the bye, after they made him the Talking starter. About starter, Isaiah Pacheco. Um, yeah, the starter for the Kansas City Chiefs. I think there's huge opportunity here for him to – look, all three of these running backs will be involved for the Chiefs, and all three can be both played and be terrible options. But remember the beginning of the season where the starter, who happened to be Clyde Edwards-Alaire in that three-headed timeshare, was just really good for fantasy because the touchdown opportunities are there. Isaiah Pacheco, having gotten through you know several games of his rookie season and being made the starter, now coming out of a bye, you're talking about a long-term rest-of-season stash who is playable and who still possesses a hopeful upside, an unknown of really kind of taking over as the season progresses, the second half of his rookie year, where he, he is both someone you could start now and hope that he gets a touchdown and has room to be better every week the rest of the season. So he's someone, I think, available in somehow more than 50% of leagues. I think he would be worth taking a, a fab dump on. Yeah, I agree. A fab dump? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> taking mm -hmm. a fab dump on them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but like it, a good fab dump. You know, Pacheco. I mean, it, it feels good. You know, it's, That's it's, something it's, producer's not, alley. You yes. don't struggle. You're not grimacing and overworking and going to blow out no ring. But it feels good. Yeah, just taking a good fab dump yeah. is necessary sometimes. <laughs> nice, healthy fab dump. Um, was that that was the line of over? A thousand, no, it wasn't. That was a show that, some poop no, jokes. No, no, I just didn't have anything to say. You got anything to say, Brooksy? No. Oh. You taking any fab dumps this week? I don't think so. Okay. Brian Robinson, not would, would you draw Brian Robinson for Pacheco? Yes. Uh, he, Pacheco can catch passes and will be involved maybe. in that. Maybe. Could oh. be the goal line guys on a much better offense. That's a that's a difficult line right there. Stashes, Kyron Williams, Jalen Warren, Rashad White, Dearness Johnson. Yeah, Dearness Johnson, you will you may know by the time you're listening to this because if, if Kareem is gone, then Dearness is the next man up to be the RB2. They're going into the bye week. So it's you don't have to, you know, drop uh, drop a huge uh, fab dump, so oh to speak. Uh, you don't have to burn a priority to get Dearness Johnson, but he's interesting. Jalen Warren, it's just a sensitive topic after yeah. all that Halloween candy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jalen Warren to me is interesting. We brought him up yesterday. It's a another bye week player because everyone's on the freaking bye this week. Thanks NFL, but he. If, when you're watching Najee Harris and you're watching Jalen Warren, Najee Harris looks like the undrafted player, and Jalen Warren looks like the high draft capital running back at this point. And then an article, I can't remember the source that came out yesterday, of saying, you know, just highlighting how bad Najee Harris has been. Is not just, you know, athletically, he doesn't look right. He had the foot injury in training camp. He's making interesting decisions because maybe he thinks he can still make certain jump cuts or or juke moves that he can't right now because his body won't let him. But over the bye week, if we come out of that and they're like, well, we're going to move this more to a timeshare or the op maybe they actually shut Najee Harris down. There's a lot of things that the Steelers could do for Jalen Warren to really gain value heading into the second half of the season. Which tight ends are you looking to welcome into the fold this week? Uh, tight ends. There's there's a lot. You Obviously, got, Greg D is yeah, going to be at baby. the top of the list. You've you've on got, that bye week. <laughs> <laughs> even on the bye week, Greg Dulcich would be the number one because if you're looking for help, if you're like, man, I need a tight end, then you need to roster two and you need to roster Greg Dulcich. I He's agree. had three games in his entire career as a rookie. He's been a top twelve tight end each week. 44, 51, 87 yards. He's got a touchdown in one of them. He looks explosive. He's playing the part. Um, you know, you, you need to take a shot when a player looks like he has the potential to break out. And I don't usually trust rookie tight ends. But look, if he's doing it, oh, you know, NBA Jam rules, three in a row. You got you to gotta believe. Isaiah Likely is only 7% rostered. Give me the fab spend for 
the Andrews manager, and then if you're not an Andrews manager, on Isaiah Likely and the potential upside or ability to just step in and be relevant with Andrews on the bench? I would spend 20, 25 fab if I'm the Andrews manager to make sure I have him because otherwise you're going to possibly not know who you can start on Monday night. He is a great cuff for Andrews, and I would probably roster Likely even further into the season in case Andrews got injured. If I'm not the Andrews manager, you know, it's like I, I, I would love to – personally, I have George Kittle on by. I would love yeah. to pick up Isaiah Likely, but I can't do it because I'm not going to roster three tight ends, and I'm not dropping George Kittle, so – I don't know if Isaiah Likely is going to be a starter on Monday, and I won't know that when I'm making my waiver claims tonight for them to run in the morning. So, you know, it, maybe put in a, a dollar or two. He is worth he is worth having on your roster for sure. If the Andrews manager doesn't go after him and you're wanting that shot in the dark, maybe we know before Sunday Mark Andrews' health. He's, he, I, is I think Isaiah world? Likely is like a top six play. If Andrews is out, is there a world where somebody with a good tight end could flex Isaiah likely because of the fact that they don't have Rashad Bateman and, you know, Duvernay is, is kind of a, you know, they give him opportunities to use his speed, but he's not really a downfield threat and six for 77 and a touchdown last week. That is a really good point, Andy. I haven't thought about that. Like for my, for my team last week, I ended up instead of going Marquise Goodwin, or Michael Gallup, I went Mike Gesicki in my flex as that last piece. And, yeah, if you pick up Isaiah Likely and you're just saying, hey, I'm willing to flex this guy over other waiver wire wide receivers and waiver wire running backs that are available, he is he is a good start if he is the starter. If you can get Likely very cheap, as Jason was saying right now, I think it's worth it just to go through the week and see what happens. If you're, you know, George Kittle's on by. Okay, I, and you'll have to make a move, but maybe you know before Sunday if if Mark Andrews is going to play, and if he is, then you just go draw. I mean, Evan Ingram, f forever on your waiver wire, forever you could pick him up and just play him one week and then drop him. Robert Tunyon gets Detroit; he's about he rostered in about half a league. So there's there's other options that could be out there. Tyler Conklin is super sure. widely available. Yeah, just and some really. Interesting and fine backup options should likely not become the starter with, with Andrews out. All right. Other names, Hayden Hurst, Evan Ingram, Dawson Knox scored again. Uh, Tyler Conklin reemerged. Yeah. We'll see. No thoughts on any of those names? Not really. I mean, Hayden Hurst last night was not great it's hard to you know take that, that whole game was garbage for the Bengals take that memory away Dawson Knox got a touchdown which is obviously always a chance when Josh Allen's throwing the ball but not very involved um in the passing game to the degree that I would write like so I think what the players Mike said you know Evan Ingram uh, Robert Tunyon in, in Detroit those are the names that I would be looking at uh, to to pick up if I need a start this week all right, defenses, who are we welcoming into the fold for this upcoming week? I think there are a few really interesting streamers. So you have the Cincinnati Bengals will be taking on Carolina, and they, they just got wrecked, but they, you know, I believe that they're at home against Carolina and P.J. Walker. The Panthers aren't going to do what they did to the Falcons, to the Bengals. Uh, so they're – they're in play for me. And the Minnesota Vikings, even more widely available. They're taking on the Manders, and the Manders have they've taken the third most sacks. Taylor Heineke. Oh, he loves to chuck he, it. He pulled, they pulled out a miracle win. but Because he chucked it. <laughs> but it be, due to him doing the chucking, that turns into a lot of interception potential. And Minnesota is a better defense to me than the Colts. Yeah, and, and the Patriots, they're not – as widely available as some of those teams but the second game again a lot of times rookie quarterbacks or newer you know you you haven't seen them out there um they can come out and have a decent first game in their second game when there's an entire game of film on how they play and right. their tendencies you give that to bill belichick and you say hey sam sam ellinger uh <laughs> go out and throw against bill belichick's defense it's gonna be tough sledding for him i think the trap defense of the week is the 
Miami Chicago matchup. I I don't want to play a really bad defense in Miami who has just keeps getting worse against Chicago's emerging offense, even if the season long metrics look like you should. That's yeah, another one of those traps. You look at last week, the 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 Cowboys had a touchdown return on a, a fumble. The most fluky of returns. That was, if you didn't see it, absolutely wild. There's just a fumble recovery by Micah Parsons. He's down on the ground, and Justin Fields, who was right there, decides to hop over him. Don't touch him down. Make sure you don't touch him, yeah. even accidentally. Hops right over him and lets him get up and run in for a touchdown. Um, shouldn't have happened. So, yeah, I, I agree with you to a degree. Uh, yeah, other than that touchdown, they would have been, you know, middle of the pack as a play. New England play, you know, it looked like a great matchup against them. They beat New England, and uh, I think it was five fantasy points. So, just keep keep that in mind. You know, this is the time where, like, if you use the stream finder, tool on our website you know you can you can change the span yeah of weeks to find a you don't want to necessarily look at the entire year like i said seattle looks like a great matchup if you look at the whole year you look at the last three weeks you wouldn't be tempted to um you know throw daniel jones out there so just remember that you can change it to last three last five games get a better picture of how teams are trending players get better they make trades, players get healthier, defenses change. Bear all of that in mind when you're making your decisions. Um, no other information, right? No special trades. No trade, huh? Nothing. Well, that's a shame. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Get ready for disappointment. All right, that was Welcome to the Fold, presented by our friends at Samsung, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4 makes multitasking super easy, including that waiver wire. Use it to check player rankings, watch highlights, and view trade targets to improve your roster all at the same time. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Still got to talk about the quarterback position. Full stream ahead. I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers against Detroit as my stream of the week. It has been rough for the Packers. Four straight losses. Doesn't have a three-touchdown game this year. But the uh, the setup this week for a get-right game, it's there. Romeo Dobbs, Alan Lazard should be back. They may trade for a wide receiver. I still think that's a possibility. And the Lions are allowing 8.1 yards per attempt, the highest in the NFL. They seem to be moving the ball better with Aaron Jones as the focal point, albeit you know it was a tough matchup last week against Buffalo. But um, I think Aaron Rodgers this week is a strong play. Agreed. Yeah, in in division in Detroit, where Detroit can put and up points, I we like it a lot. Actually, is this a real? Oh, do, do we, we have, have news? It? Is this fake Adam Schefter or real Adam Schefter? We this should. is real. Wow, real Adam Schefter. Breaking news! Wow, the Detroit Lions are dealing tight end T.J. Hawkinson in division to the Minnesota Vikings, who are six and one. And, Irv uh, Smith has a high ankle sprain. Yeah, they've had about enough of Hurt Smith Jr. I like it. T uh, TJ Hawkinson going to the Vikings. Which, good for you, Detroit, for not doing this nonsense of, well, this player's not, we don't want him on our team, but we don't want him on your team. Like, If he's not a good fit for your team because you don't think he's good enough, you don't think he's worth the money, doesn't matter. Just trade him. Go and get they, something. And they got a haul. Minnesota Did sends they? a 2023 20, second, a 2024 third, a 2023 fourth, and a 2024 conditional fourth no round pick. No way. Are you serious? They are paying up for a guy who they have seen uh, in their division be uh, you know, a dominant athlete, a good run blocker, can get out and catch passes can help break this offense wide open. Well, and they're they're going for it. I mean, right? They're 6 and 1. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they should go for it. That's wild though. I can't no way. Kyle, what did did he say the compensation wrong? Yeah, Minnesota sends a 2023 second, a 2024 third for Hawkinson, a 2023 fourth oh. and a conditional. Okay, well, that is that a makes, lot different. That Thank makes you, Kyle. far more sense. <laughs> so, we, a did, so a fourth round pick goes back. Yeah, and a 2024 conditional fourth round pick. <laughs> yeah, that's is this a much good, better. Is this a good time to bring up what happened in our league of record, where somebody traded? Oh, oh yes, they traded Travis. They made an offer with Travis Kelsey, and they meant to put in the other person's multiple seconds and thirds, 
But they, they accidentally put their own seconds and thirds. So we w- wake up and was, we see this trade that's going. It's like, oh, man, Kelsey was moved. So what was the compensation? Wait, they gave up Kelsey <laughs> and the picks? And multiple <laughs> seconds and thirds for basically nothing. Um, which, by the way, we reversed that yeah. trade because it was an accident. <laughs> uh, but this is huge. TJ yeah. Hawkinson, I mean, this to me, this uh, – you know, it doesn't affect Justin Jefferson and whether anything's good for him. If anything, it's, you know, good for the offense. Um, Amon Ra. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it even affects Amon Ra that much. I, I, I think what it, who it affects is Kirk Cousins. I mean, it ups Kirk Cousins' upside to have another viable target on the inside of this offense. Amon Ra was going to get his, wasn't he? Sure, but, I mean, you know, part of the breakout last year that we were yeah. talking about was well, Hawkinson was gone when Amon okay. Ra was just okay. absolutely dominating. And this is another target gone for Amon Ra to just soak up. You could, th- you could throw the ball to Amon Ra every play, and you can't do that when you throw it to TJ Hawkinson, so just keep throwing it to Amon Ra. How, how much of this acquisition is based on the fact that Hawkinson's hair meets the Viking culture? Oh, he does. Oh, they, yeah. He's he does very like Viking. A, yes. So, you know, in a, a, in a, a cowardly lot. lion sense. Right. right. Not a Valhalla. Not this a cowardly, a cowardly lion, lion anymore. He's oh. a Viking. Oh, I like it. So Aaron Rodgers was my stream of the week. Moving back here. Keep breaking in with news. Thank you for that, guys. This right. is, I give you credit for making a trade happen during the show. I'm going to give you a streaming quarterback. Then you give me the next trade. Yes. Okay. Yes. Here's the next streaming quarterback. It's a quarterback that's been bad lately. It's Trevor Lawrence. Trust the process. I, I was gonna say, man, I am. <laughs> I'd be nervous to do this. I uh, I would not because the Raiders have just stunk. They just got uh, shut out and boat raced by the Saints. The Raiders uh, rank 32nd in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to the quarterback position. You, you know how good Russell Wilson's been this year? Bad. He was the quarterback three. Ryan Tannehill is not a what fantasy. What was Dalton vi- last week? Viable. Well, Dalton, I uh, some of his scoring came through the air with Alvin Kamara, but I know yeah. Alvin Kamara had three touchdowns. I, I don't. It wasn't a trap. I was just genuinely yeah, asking how Dalton was ended up. 17 points. He was QB 18, so 229 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, yeah. For, for a streaming type of a player, you take it. Yeah, Davis Mills was the quarterback six. Ryan Tannehill was the quarterback eight. You've got a lot of um, players who have had nice, easy throwing lanes against the Raiders. And I do think Trevor Lawrence, while he can be bad, we've seen him be really good. His, his upside is tremendous, and so I, I am fine streaming Trevor Lawrence this week. And, All right. Mike, this one makes the most – oh, wait, well, we're waiting for yeah, the breaking news. We're waiting news? for the oh, trade. Yeah. Could so, you uh, – Al? Al? Got nothing yet. Okay. All I'm right. sure it's coming. Judge? Judge Giamatti? Nope. Mm. Right, focus that energy on Kareem, please. Uh, right. um, and yeah. Borg, what do you got? I mean, that Nothing. one was a full surprise with Hawkinson. The there, NFL trade deadline has had was, some movers There and was shakers. whispers that started creeping up in the last couple of days on Hawkinson. I'm, I'm surprised they went to the Vikings. Okay. But again, good for you. All right. My streamer of the week, because my dude, please be good. Please be good, as you have been the last couple of weeks. It is Justin Fields' time. Andy was scared to play that Miami Dolphins defense uh, against the Chicago Bears because the Dolphins defense is bad. Because they're they're a bad defense, and Chicago's offense has been getting it together the last three weeks. QB eight, QB five, QB five. He's averaging nine and a half rushing attempts per game at fifty three yards. This offense is starting to get it together, and that includes that cheat code of using Justin Fields' legs. So if he if he doesn't have a prolific passing day, but he still gets you 50 yards on the ground, that comes through for fantasy. Dolphins are uh, the Dolphins. The Dolphins <laughs> defense, uh, 26 against the quarterback position on the year, so they are um, they're no good. And, and if you 29th pick, in total defensive rank, if you're picking up Justin Fields, then you are lined up for that Miami, Detroit, Atlanta stretch run of Woo. of you. You might be just be playing him three weeks in a row. Any breaking news? Kareem. Nah. You no, know, these producers, uh, I swear. Yeah, right. yeah, come on. They give you it. a little, and then they just, that's yeah. it. First one's yeah. free. <laughs> I'll pay. What you got for me? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Anything else we got to cover then? Are we done? We've got the Ride or Die, the Thursday night preview tomorrow, the midseason review show. Nothing new? We're no, done? Nope. We'll new. have some news to go over tomorrow. Well, well. Yeah, pay attention to social media, at the FF Ballers on Twitter. Maybe we'll get some more big trades. I think we will. I think we'll have a couple more 
Big ones. Fingers crossed. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.